Today we're going to do a little recoil work. You can see that I have here a 1976 Mercury Trail Twister and by looking at the recoil here you can see that uh, it doesn't go in all the way in and, and it's warm in the garage. It's about 55 degrees in here and it's not going in all the way now which means when I take it outside and I set it out there and it's five degrees out it really has lots of problems because then it won't go back in after you pull start it. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the rope on it and not only will we replace the rope but we will tighten up the spring so that it has less problems and also not only will we tighten up the spring but we will check to verify that there isn't uh, some grease in there or something because grease as it gets cold is going to have more problems also because the grease gets cold and it gets hard and then uh, that grease will not allow the recoil to go back in. After I got this recoil apart, I could see that it's got some kind of a drag in there. You can see as I pull it out, it doesn't go back in very well. So something's happening here that we're really not sure about. Uh, as we take this apart, we'll find out what's going on. The rope is in fairly good shape. It's got a little bit of fraying here. Nylon rope that they normally use. If you can get regular pull starter cord, it works good. Don't buy just average and you obviously don't want to run with any kind of a cotton type of a cord. Nylon is what you want to use. So now we'll take this center bolt out of here and that'll give me an idea. It's already moving freer. So something's happening here where this is locking up. So we'll find this out once we get this apart, what inside of here seems to be creating some sort of a bind. Maybe it's got a, a washer that needs to be taken out, maybe too many pieces in there that might be creating some sort of a bind in there. So it has the spring. The spring basically that I just talked about, this is the keeper that keeps it all in there. This spring goes in there and basically holds it all in tight where it needs to stay and these are the dogs that as you pull the cord these dogs expand and they engage into the starter mechanism uh, inside of the engine. So now we can basically take this apart and see what we got. And I gotta take it all apart anyway so I'm just gonna cut this rope off and make it somewhat simple Scissors is getting kind of old. It's from many years of cutting fiberglass blanket, which is kind of hard on a scissors. Okay, now I'm going to wind this up so the rope goes all inside and then basically slide the internals out. And then we'll take a look. If you look down inside here, you can see several things on here. These edges of these tabs are what hooks on the spring inside of here. And you can see that the spring is kind of bent over. We've got a couple of pieces in here that are, are messed up. You can see right there is a, a section that's, that's bent over. This is the edge of the spring that's actually, that edge of that spring that's bent is supposed to be bent in 180 degrees and that's supposed to hook in this edge. So you can see that that's not happening. And uh, then there was another piece down inside here. If I point with my screwdriver instead of my finger, this is a piece of the actual, what the spring sits inside of. And that should be bent uh, back up straight. That's not supposed to be bent the way that it is. 
So I will uh, take a look. I may have uh, another complete unit uh, that's in better shape than this one. So I'm going to leave at this point in time okay. and see what else I didn't I have one that was better than the one I have. So now I'm going to show you what drives everybody crazy when they're working on recoils. When the spring does this. Uh, now it doesn't want to do it. I'm going to do it purposely just so you can see. When it does that, then you got much fun that goes on putting it back together. So I will give you an idea of what's going on when I put it back together. I will show you somewhat how to do it, but it's not a lot of fun. You can see this is bent. It's bent almost straight. That's got to be bent back at 180 degrees approximately. And then this little section here that's that's bent over, I'm going to uh, take a, basically a four and a half inch grinder and I'm going to cut a little section out of there. I need to have a little space there. So maybe I'll just bend this straight. I might be able to bend this straight and get away with it. It's in better shape than the other ones that I have. It needs to have a little space there so that that can get out. So that'll be all right, I guess, the way that it is. I'll just straighten it out a little bit here and it'll be fairly close to what we're looking for. Now, if this was a brand new sled, it might be a different story. I might be able to uh, buy a piece for it. This is not, it's a vintage sled. So I basically have to uh, utilize whatever I can utilize until I can possibly find a better part. Um, now this being a spring is spring steel. So it's basically hardened. You're only gonna bend it so many times before it's gonna break. So you wanna be kinda gentle while you're working with it and not beat the heck out of it. So that's about as good as what I can get it right there. That doesn't look too terrible. It will last for a while. And you can try to get it straight. Basically wrap your fingers into the center section here and then just start pulling. Try to keep it in line as best possible. Pulling and then you can wrap it. But you gotta hold it so that it doesn't come apart. When it comes apart on you, you get to start over again. backside of your pull starter here which would be one of these little ears right here so now I need to set this spring inside of here and get this little ear sticking out through that hole it has to go in the correct direction So what I'm going to do, just to verify that I'm putting it together in the correct direction, is I'm going to go back and I'm going to take another one that I have apart. Because I don't want to have to do this all over again. Luckily I have a model, which uh, sometimes you may have, sometimes you may not have. And if you don't have a model, then you just get to figure it out before you go putting it all back together. Well, with my model, I can see what direction it's got to go in. So now I'm going to put a few more turns on this. Get a little bit smaller.
And just like that, it's now in where it we can needs start to putting be. it all back together. What I'm going to start out with first is I'm going to melt the end of this rope and pull it up to a nice end so that it's nice and clean. Obviously, you don't want to get any of this on your fingers because it will burn your fingers, guaranteed. It is very hot. Then we will feed the rope in through the hole in the pull starter. Needle nose is a good tool for this. And we will tie a knot. The rope I'm using here is quarter inch nylon rope. A good quality quarter inch nylon rope. Leave a little excess slack at the end or it'll end up pulling through on you. And uh, then you can do it again. Push it all down inside of there. And then you can wrap it around. And you want to get as much rope on here as possible because if you run out of rope, when you're pulling it to start it, you're uh, going to end up breaking either the rope or the spring or something inside. So you want as much rope as possible. So just wrap it, get it in here good and tight so that it's down inside. If it's not down inside, you're not going to be able to put it back together. And I would say that that's about as much as what I'm going to fit in there. About up to there. So, at that point, I will cut it off. Needle nose makes a pretty good scissors sometimes. Especially if your scissors is dull. Melt the end of that one. Pull it off nice and clean. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna set this down. I'm going to pull myself off a piece of electrical tape, get a nice clean piece. I'm going to use that to tape the end of this rope on here. Otherwise, while we're putting this together and spinning it inside to wind the spring up, it's going to uh, hook and that rope's going to unwind while we're winding the spring up. So now we take a look at the back side and we can now put our, our spring inside of there again. This piece of the spring has to hook into one of these and the inside of the notch here will fit down in the notch inside. So that works right about there. Let me see here. Just put a little spin on it there, and that should do the trick. Now we got to get this to stay over a little bit, because when we set it down, we got to get it to go down further, and that's always a trick in itself. So we'll look down through the center of the hole, and you can see the end of the spring. So what I'm going to try to do is lower this into place. You can see the notch that it's got to go in down here. So without the spring dropping out of the bottom, hopefully we'll get lucky and be able to lower this right down on and it'll fit right in there. There she went, just like that. Get the dog straightened out, the washer on, Put our bolt in here, get it through the spring, get it started, 
Pull the dogs back. And hold them. Where we get this down. It's snugged up. And we'll just snug her up good and tight. Now, it's supposed to be approximately five and a half to six turns on this uh, recoil. Um, if you don't know what it's supposed to be, then you just want to get it uh, so that the spring is somewhat snug and it's going to pull the rope back in, but not too tight that you're going to break the spring. Because if it's too tight, the harder you pull on it, every time the more problems you're going to have uh, with the spring breaking. Too much tension on the spring is not good. So there I got one. There's two. I don't know if I'll go five and a half. Maybe four. There's three. I think four will be plenty. And there's four. She wants to pull in pretty good already, so I'm going to leave it at four. Now I'm going to pull my piece of tape off that I put on here to hold the rope in place. Kind of wiggle it around so I can get it out from down below because it's hooked on. I got the whole piece of tape out. And now, I can slide the end of my rope out, as you can see there, try to hold this at the same time, and turn that, and there I got the rope to come out. Yeah, it feels pretty snug, that's plenty of pull on there, I got plenty of rope on it, but once the rope it's a pretty good sized diameter piece of rope, so it's kind of sits a little snug right now. Once it gets pulled over and the rope seeks its own uh, area and the rope gets stretched out a little bit, it'll fit in there much better than what it does now. Just takes a little bit sometimes to get everything to work correctly with you. Pull the rope up and again, you want to leave a little slack on the back side. Nylon tends to slip, so the last thing you want to do is have it slip off of the end. So you leave a little extra play in there. That never hurts nothing. You can actually uh, stick it down inside ahead of it so that it all goes down inside of there. And that's the end. It's all put Looks good. Everything works. That's the end of the video.